Knicks at home matinee edition against the new look Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, hey, man, Nick, Knicks hung tight. This this was a 12-round fight. And, and you know, Nick, Knicks hung in there. The new look Knicks led by R.J. Barrett. Once again, late game execution would doom this Nick team. Like I said, they fought valiantly. But in the end, man, the, the two-headed monster of Embiid and Harden was just too much for this Nick team. And in crunch time, we, we know uh, this is not the Nick strong suit, man. When it comes to clutch performances, no point guard, no go-to guy, no dice. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it, obviously, but this new look six to team, this high octane team with, with Harden in tow. Uh, you know, I, I didn't like our chances early, but give credit to the Knicks. We went heavy, heavy RJ early to start this game off, man. Offense flowing through RJ, taking yeah. it into the third. And and Philly looked like they were starting to run away with it a little bit. You know, the third was getting a bit frustrating. Starting lineup was underwhelming. Burks had nothing all night, Tibbs. Can we get a little bit of McBride? Give credit to 48 and quickly for closing the quarter well. 48, 24 points, 6 of 11 from downtown. And quick, you know, quickly, who's been struggling mightily all season, struggling to find a groove. I think things changed in that third quarter when we finally were getting aggressive and getting into the paint. And that was quickly. Give quickly credit, man. Quickly, 21 points, five rebounds, five of 13 from the field. So, But here's where I thought this thing got out of reach, Al. We lost Jericho. We lost Jericho. We lost Mitch. Six fouls apiece. We were going small. We had a very interesting lineup. We we had IQ, RJ, Cam, Julius, and Obi. Very interesting lineup. And I wanted to see that lineup go to distance. But with six minutes left, we down by one. Tibbs takes out takes out Cam, brings Burks back in, and then brings Fournier in for Obi. So you're not only losing. Your defensive potential, because I thought Cam was good out there, active hands all day, length, athleticism, you're losing that. And then you're losing potentially more rebounds where you really need it by taking out uh, uh, by taking out Obi and putting in Fournier. To me, quickly had it cooking at the point you didn't need Burks. And that's my guy. But we're going to call it like it is. You didn't need him. Cam should have finished the game, or you go with Obi to finish the game. I thought that was a big blunder by Tibbs. And after that six-minute point, as you're getting closer to crunch time, crunch time, you're getting closer to clutch minutes. Philly, Philly went on a rampage, man. 16 to 4 run. And that was a knockout blow. You touched on Alec Burks. 32 minutes was 34 minutes, I should say. Six points, six boards, no assists, negative 19 in the uh plus minus wasn't doing anything today. Wasn't giving us anything at the point guard position was getting cooked by Tyrese Maxey and anyone else that he was guarding. He was a little too slow today. Didn't think he was deserving of those minutes. I thought, as you said, CP, you know, Cam could have closed this out. Anybody else could have closed this out. We could have Obi Toppin in there. Anybody. There's no reason to go with Burks down the stretch. Even if you want to argue for his defense, he wasn't even giving you defense today. So there's no reason that he should have been in this game whatsoever he wasn't giving you anything bro 34 minutes <laughs> 34 <laughs> minutes too much uh next guy i want to talk about jericho sims because i thought we saw some good stuff from jericho yeah, sims did. especially early on uh he got you 10 boards in the first half and it stopped right there got you two assists as well no points but i like the way that he was battling with Embiid. you know Embiid is a bigger guy mvp candidate for this season he's good to, he's able to bring the ball up he's got good footwork very diabolical when it comes to working in the paint, but Jericho was holding his own. I, the ones I could just pinpoint in my memory, back-to-back -back plays, he blocks Embiid for a shot, and then he denies an entry pass into Embiid as well, gets some critical yeah. boards. He was doing a lot. He was doing a lot of good stuff today. You could still see that he's raw when it comes to boxing out and still getting his positioning. But the fact that he was able to battle with an MVP candidate for this season, that gives that gives a lot of like. Hope, whatever you want to call it, for Jericho Sims moving forward. The other thing I want to touch on 
is that we were actually seeing some stagger stagger with these lineups, especially er, early on in the half. You know, yep. you had Tibbs who was putting RJ out there by himself, giving Randall some rest, and then vice versa with Randall out there and RJ some rest, letting both those guys be the focal points of those lineups. I liked it. He went away from it in the third quarter. Yep. He then went back to running the entire starting unit down to the ground again, which made absolutely no sense. So I did. I do want to point that there was some stagger. I did like it. I did like the lineups I see. I liked it more so when it was RJ out there. I think it was IQ, Fournier, RJ, uh, Toppin, and Sims. And if you brought, and then they brought back in Mitch, and you brought in Cam for Fournier as well. I like those rotations. Those guys were ready to move out in space. They were pushing the pace. Then you go back to the rotation with Randall, which was Burks, uh, yeah. Cam, Randall, Fournier, and uh, Mitch. And that was just too too stagnant. No one was cutting. No one was doing anything. I think you could just see that all those guys – are not comfortable playing with each other. Even the two man game that we're waiting for, for Fournier and Randall, it's a hit or miss. It wasn't there today. Terrible. So I didn't like that rotation one bit, but I understood the thought process behind it. Talking about RJ running the offense. So let's just, let's just keep it real. Let's just put him at the point, you know, no more experiments, no more, no more IQ. IQ had a great game, but IQ was, he was looking for his own shot. You know what I mean? So Put IQ, whether you want to start him or bring him off the bench, put him at the two, you know, little baby AI action. Put RJ at the one, and then bring Cam off the bench and start him. Because I'm tired of – I think the problem with Tibbs is, like, when he – when someone's cooking off the bench, he struggles to have them close. You know what I mean? Whether it's IQ, whether it's whether it's Cam Reddish, you know what I mean? So, like if you start them, they'll just kind of be – he always puts the starters back. But so I think he's more dynamic than, than Quentin Grimes. It has more potential. Sure, for sure. Damn near the same age. And then I'll bring uh, Randall, obviously, start him, and then and Mitch. But I think for we got 20 games left. Last 10 games, I'm saying, yo, Jew, Randall, call the season. You log like, like Mad Minutes. Let's just put Obi in there. Because Obi and Cam, they look kind of nice today. And I'm just like, Randall doesn't cut to the basket, but Obi does, and so does Cam. So when you got them both in there with RJ running the point, you know what I mean? You, you, it's dynamic. You got people cutting, and then you have um, – you have IQ that can get his own shot. I do. I'm. I'm starting to think that although I love Mitch, we we definitely probably do need someone that can space the floor. Because if we had Embiid out, you know, uh, when Mitch was still in, you know, then IQ, RJ, all that are guys that can really cut to the basket and mm-hmm. obviously Randall can hit a shot as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, that's just what I'm thinking, and I'm good with with Tibbs coaching the rest of the season. Because he's gonna get us into the tank. I'm trying to get Jalen Ivy. Let's go. Uh, even if it requires us trading, like trading up in the draft, we just gotta do it. First man, I mean the thing with Tibbs that just really annoys me. He just mm-hmm. does not hold Randall accountable at all. The turnovers, he's getting beat back door today all game. Like if that was Obi doing that, he would have been yanked. He would have been yelling at him. He doesn't even look at Randall. He won't even say a word. How many times did he get beat back door today? Yeah, the that, that, that was that was that killing critical us, moment. I'll never take him out of the game for it. That's just a bad look, man. You know the rest of the players. You don't think these guys see it? Yeah. You know it's just it's just ridiculous, man. Tibbs and Randall are a huge part of the problems. They just are, as well as having no point guard, obviously. And the thing with Randall too, if you notice, there was uh, the end of the third quarter, right? Quickly mm-hmm. had the ball, the last play. And if you notice, he gave quickly a look. Like, what are you doing? Like, I'm the guy who takes every shot at the end of the quarters. Like, you are, but you shouldn't be. You're not that guy. It doesn't have to be you every last, you know, at the end of the quarters, every single, you know, every quarter. I just want to know what direction do you guys think they're going to go in the off season, and what direction do you want them to go? Because this is not it. Like, fight, you know, looking at Tankathon, we're still in the same spot we were like two, three weeks ago when people were saying let's tank. Like, it's like, you know, I think we have to make it choose a direction. It fills me. Honestly, I know people are probably going to hate this, but if we're not getting a star, I'm going to do a three-year, like, tank slash rebuild, whatever you want to call it. You're bringing Kenny Atkinson. You're bringing someone who's about development. You keep building through the draft because this, this isn't it, you know, being ninth, tenth in the tankathon standings. Yeah. We're not getting the stars. And even if we do, you know, it's going to be through trade because the stars don't want to come here through free agency. You don't think you're yeah. going to have to give up an RJ if you want to get, you know, a Donovan Mitchell or whoever. You're going to have to give up picks. You're going to have to give up yeah. players you guys love. 
So that's just when, you know, I just wanted to see what you guys think. What yeah. direction you think they're going to go in. Oh, what direction they're going to go is they're going to keep, keep trying to get good plays. And it has to start at the point guard. You know, whether they evaluate McBride that way or they go in the draft, they, they try to get an Ivy or Ty Ty Washington. You guys like the kid from Kentucky. We got the article up on KnicksFanTV.com, the top five point guard prospects to watch in the draft. Do they want to go get a Jalen Brunson? Do they use Mitch in that type of trade? You know, what type of sign and trade do they get for uh, for Jalen Brunson? Uh, I think it's going to start with the point guard. You know, I, I think it's going to start with the point guard, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Either Ivy and even like if you're trying to get Jay and Ivy and you're, you know, looks like at this point we're going to be in the lottery. Even if you're out of reach, I think the Knicks themselves got to think about trading some of that draft capital to move up to get somebody like that. You just yeah. watch him and you see how tenacious he is. He looks like a gamer out there. You need somebody like that on this team. You need someone with grit, passion, someone who wants to get out there and constantly fight. Mm -hmm. That looks like Jaden Ivey right now. So if I were the Knicks, I would move in that direction. Or if you want to go get Jalen Brunson, because I do love Jalen Brunson too. If you don't want to trade your draft capital for that and you still want to stockpile, go make a big push to go get Jalen Brunson. If you want to still feature RJ, you want someone who's cerebral, who thinks of the game at a high level, go get that guy. Yeah. So go get Jalen Brunson. Go get Jay. Go get one of those guys. Even like we just need talent in this building. 